I'm so sorry to all my audience members. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scrub. How, how does somebody own the rights for B. Arthur? Uh, I, I wish my face was worth 10 grand. He's like the fun punisher. The punisher. Are you hitting on me? Oh, the fuck it. He hits fuck it really well. I did say he hit ball. I wish I was like that. Hello and welcome to Movie Smash! Hello and welcome to Movie Smash, the podcast that looks at comic book movies outside the MCU that you may or may not remember. If you're the type of person that enjoys talking about hidden gems or just likes to tear old movies apart, this is the place for you. And with that, let's get started. I'm one of your hosts, Chris Roberts. I'm the founder of Off Panel Creations. With me today, I have Jeremy Parmentier. Hi, I'm Jerry Parmentier, also of the Retrovaniac podcast, and I want to be the guy that points out that this one actually is kind of part of the MCU. Yeah, with a new movie coming out this summer, is it part of the MCU? Is it not part of the MCU? I guess we'll find out in a couple months. And Fergal Amayo. I am Fergal Amayo, your founder, your prodigious proprietor of comics and all things nerd at Gotham Knight Comics. And I just got to say, I feel like Marvel Jesus. Let's go into it. Our movie tonight is 2016's Deadpool, starring Ryan Reynolds and directed by Tim Miller. I love you, Wade Wilson. We can fight this. You're right. The cancer's only my liver, lungs, prostate, and brain. All things I can live without. What if I told you we can make you better? You're a fighter. We can give you abilities most men only dream of. Make you a superhero. And please don't make the super suit green. Or animated. Oh, motherfucker, you are hard to look at. Like a testicle with teeth. You look like Freddy Krueger face-fucked a topographical map of Utah. Exactly. Before we jump into things, guys, how familiar were you with Deadpool the character before you saw this movie? Now, I could give a snarky answer to that and say not at all, but I love Deadpool. Honest to God, this is one of the best periods. For me, I know the 90s were an overwhelmingly too many titles. The values are not quite there yet, but for me, this produced some amazing artists like McFarlane, like Leah Field, you know, and Deadpool is just iconic. He's, a, he's, an, he's actually an iconic character. And personally, I think, you know, wherever Kevin Feige is right now, he's thinking the Deadpool gods that Ryan Reynolds was around. So at, when I saw this movie the first time, I knew of Deadpool, but I think we've talked about this before for some other episodes, but um, for whatever reason, Deadpool and kind of the, all the X-Men were things my brother collected. My, my brother was kind of into like more, I don't want to say X-Men was like edgy, but like the more old kind of, I don't know, non-traditional comics um, in my mind, where I was like Iron Man or Thor and Avengers. And he was like, I have the X-Men, but then I have all these little offshoots and, and other darker stuff. So I knew of Deadpool, but for some reason, I just never read a lot of those books, maybe because it just kind of was like rubbed me the wrong way because it was my brother's thing. Um, however, since seeing this and, and you know, up to current, I actually do love Deadpool and I feel like a fool for not liking him before. <laughs> Love yeah, that. for me, honestly, before that, before this movie came out, I had heard of Deadpool. I had seen his comics, but I never read his comics. Uh, that was before I actually got into comics back in the day. So, yeah, just be on the idea that he existed out there. That's all I really knew about Deadpool. But do you guys remember the first time you saw this movie? Yes. Great story. Uh, my son was five or six at the time. 2000. When did this come out again? I 2016. I'm sorry. So he was like eight, uh, four, yeah, eight years old. And he's begging me because he loves Deadpool. Like he made me buy him a Deadpool mask. I, I was not supposed to, we, we went, this was a do not tell your mother about movie. And I was thinking we, we can make it through this thing. And by the end of it, I was like, he is not going to be able to keep his mouth shut. And he didn't. And I got yelled at for two days. Uh, I didn't see this in the theater. I do know that I saw this before the sequel. Uh, I'm sure it was one of those movies that, that I was like, oh, I'll, I'll eventually see this because I do like Ryan Reynolds. Um, I actually was a fan even of his previous comic book movie, uh, The Green Lantern adaptation that he was in. And I was kind of sad they didn't keep going with that. So I was like, all right, I'll check out Deadpool when he's in that because I kind of know the character. I like Ryan Reynolds. We'll see how it is. And I absolutely loved it the first time I saw it because it was not what I expected because I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, but instead, it was maybe one of the best superhero movies I had ever seen. Yeah, we're going to talk about Green Lantern at some point. That's a great movie. <laughs> I remember going to see this movie. I don't remember who I was with, but I was with somebody. And I remember there was this family right in front of me and it was a mom who brought four little kids with her all around eight to nine years old and not knowing what this movie was about. That was a very awkward viewing for that family, I got to say. So again, I knew this was going to be kind of tough. I knew it was. I really did. I wasn't, I wasn't, on, I'm not, you know, I took him to see John Wick, so I'm not dumb. But when I went into this movie and when we were going, I was like, oh my sweet Jesus, the amount of that, it was so 
wantonly gratuitous. I loved it. And he did too, but he just couldn't keep his mouth shut. So Fergal, why don't you tell us a little about the, the history of Deadpool? Um, so Deadpool is a Leofield and a Fabian the Coza creation. Um, Leofield, as you guys know, or you probably don't know, but I always love to say, you know, the 70s and 60s, they produced some Extinowitz. I mean, great, great artists, all kinds of great artists. But the 90s gave us McFarlane, gave us Leofield, gave us a lot of folks in that same, Morrison, a lot of folks in that same direction. And so this is one of those artists. I mean, so Leofield was a guy that, you know, got turned, sort of like a um, Colonel Sanders, got turned away a bunch of times, drew very little feet. That's what he's known for. And actually they make fun of him. He draws little feet. He likes the little feet for some reason. But this, this, you know, this, he, he, it, this ends up becoming the top, the 20th out of, out of 300 comic characters ranks in the top 10 for all of Marvel characters. And as I said, if you were going to bank uh, saving a multi-billion dollar uh, intellectual property like Marvel has done, you know, they're doing it the exact right way. So, if this is your first time joining us, just a heads up, we'll be discussing the plot of this movie. Of course, I'm kind of wondering if you're listening to this podcast, how you are not one of people who have actually seen this thing, because it blew out records the entire time. But if you have not seen it, consider yourself warned. So, Jeremy, why don't you walk us through the plot of this movie? Simply, this is Deadpool's origin story kind of redone. Deadpool was previously an X-Men Origins Wolverine. Um, this one is is definitely a different origin story. Uh, you meet Wade Wilson, who's somehow ex-military. He's now some kind of mercenary that's kind of not like doing the, the I, I take jobs to help the little man kind of thing. But at the same time, he's definitely getting money for it. And he's still kind of kind of a sleaze bag. Uh, but he does manage to find uh, a woman that he falls in love with at the very beginning of the movie, sort of the very beginning of the movie, because the, the movie's set up so that you're watching this action scene where it's full on Deadpool. And then in the middle of that action scene, it freezes. He does a thing where he like talks to the camera a lot, which is what he does in the comics too. this kind of fourth wall breaking. And then it goes into his past. So that's when you get to meet the pre Deadpool version of Wade Wilson, where all these things happen. He falls in love. But then he finds out that he has stage four cancer uh, a- after basically deciding he has no other options. He does take kind of this mysterious offer to go get healed, but also become a superhero. Uh, and he's he's kind of tortured over and over again in these scenes uh, in a lab until eventually he is tortured so much that his body fights back, has these mutant genes that have been recessive in most human beings to come active, which gives him super healing. It also causes him to be horribly disfigured and scarred. So that he's basically become kind of like this, uh, you know, how Wolverine can can regenerate. It's the same idea, but he's got it even faster to the point where he can regrow body parts, but he retained the same sense of humor and, and same kind of quick wit, uh, but also became a little more crazy, I'm sure, in the process of all of that. And so the movie is about Deadpool now trying to hunt down the person who did this to him because he thinks he can, you know, kind of undo the scarring and heal that part of his body. Uh, in that process, his girlfriend at the time is captured by this bad guy named Ajax, and Deadpool will call on some friends that we all recognize from the X-Men. Colossus, although I don't know if the second person is actually an X-Men or not, or just made it for this movie, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. She's an X-Men. She's Negasonic Teenage Warhead, yes. And and so it's just basically the, the three of them uh, kind of confronting Ajax to save his girlfriend. Uh, but really, it's just the or Origin of Deadpool. This way you can have a sequel, which there is one, of course, uh, and a new one that's coming out soon, which is probably why we're covering this now, uh, where you don't have to go back into the history of Deadpool. Now he just exists. And it's it's a pretty good um, origin story movie. So why don't we jump right into the movie, guys? One of the things I enjoyed most about this movie is really the interaction between Wade Wilson, Ryan Reynolds, and the other characters. I think that's really what made this movie work. Which one of those interactions really stood out to you? Uh, the girlfriend, Monica Bathurin. You see, in order for him to want to go through all this and kind of try to figure this out and you know the contrast between becoming wade and and then you know the other side of it i just think you got to have a real deep kind of bond situation i think they did extremely well and i like the shit out of ajax i'm not gonna lie i thought he was dope well i like the time to develop the relationship between ajax and wade so that he had a reason other than just oh well this guy did this to me and i hate him like they really made ajax a real asshole to the point where it makes sense that Wade would want to hunt him down. Like he, we're, we're he was the fourth wall. <laughs> we are. And, and uh, so it was, I don't know the, 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 that was a really good character based villain, right? Sometimes the, the, the villains in these movies are, are, are notoriously, you know, large scale villains from those universes. In this case, I don't know if Ajax is in the comics or not, but he's a good direct villain for specifically, you know, Deadpool to be hunting down. It's, it's not like it's, oh, it's Deadpool and uh, Dr. Doom's here. He's going to fight Dr. Doom because he's a bad guy. Instead, it was like, no, no, no. He, he doesn't care about good or bad. He has a reason to, to literally kill this man uh, and hunt him down. So he's doing so. Uh, whether or not Deadpool's a hero or not, he, he calls himself an anti-hero. He more or less is. Um, I also love the 
the back and forth between him and Colossus. I think the the connection there is really good. You can tell that they they know each other, and and Colossus kind of respects that what Deadpool is, uh, but also you know he's he's an uncontrollable cannon, and he's trying to get it under some kind of control. I I really like that. I, I honestly I think. Th- the characters in the movie sell the movie. They they could not have cast this a whole lot better than they did. Ajax does appear in the comics, um, and the powers and abilities are almost actually, if you think about the tie-in, which is all over the place, every one of these characters, which they did, which God bless Ryan, because he put a lot of effort into this, they did throw back. So all of them are weapons X program guys. So Deadpool, Wolverine, Ajax, they're all weapon X people. And while they couldn't say that, that's a weapon X program. Yeah, I really enjoyed the connection between Vanessa and Wade Wilson. I thought their relationship it was was really key to sort of selling why he's doing what he does. You no, know, it's uh, they joke and call it what a love story because it came on, on Valentine's Day. Um, it's actually I think the 25th anniversary of Deadpool, the character. Actually, Vanessa was potentially going to be played by Olivia Munn, but I think they did a much better job with going. But her name's like Marina. Maria Bassarin, I believe. Monica or Maria, I think Monica Bassarin, something like that. I, I'm just terrible at names, as you know, because my um my intolerant accent. It's Marina. M O R E N A. Marina Bassarin, there it is. So Colossus is an interesting character, too, because the X-Men universe already had a Colossus, and they did not go with the same Colossus, like the style and look of it. Because the original guy uh, decided not to come back for the role of Colossus because he hated doing motion capture, so they had to redesign it. So my question there is that because Colossus looks different, is it the same universe as the X-Men series that came out? No, that's what makes this amazing. This is not. I actually think this is part of the, uh, because the one we've been focusing on, the one that's been the last decade is 616. I think this is 1610 or one of the kind of the offshoot universes, but it's not fully the same. But I will tell you fun fact about that. Ryan and Tim Miller, because Ryan essentially wrote this script and lobbied for a decade to make this movie, even going so far as to do it horribly just to get a shot to do it right. And And the horrible one was the studio's idea. So this one was his. So he went with a comic accurate Colossus. I did want to bring up the the taxi driver. <laughs> I love that character. I don't know why. I just love that character. And he's actually an homage to somebody that Ryan Reynolds actually knew in elementary school. He's, it's someone he knew back in elementary school who died by a lightning strike, supposedly. Oh, wow. I That character, like the way he's portrayed, it's just a fun character. Doesn't he come back in like the second movie as well? He comes back in the second, and I believe he's in the third. And they'll, I think they're going to revisit Gita because Gita is his love interest. So, and so that's the interesting thing about this movie is, and I think that's the interesting thing about this character is that, and I think if you go back on the comics, and I hope you guys all have because there are so many different stories. Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe is one of the best comics ever written. But and it really kind of goes into who he is and how crazy he actually is. But the idea being with this guy is that he can make a, he can interact with even the most minor characters. Joe Pinter's not a major character, but he is in this movie. Hey, Jeremy, you mentioned uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. By the way, one of the coolest names in the original script. That character was going to be Cannonball because I, I believe in uh, Fergal. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, but Negasonic her power set is not explosions. It's like a no, psychic set, isn't it? It is a little bit. It's a little bit different than the comic obviously there's some changes but i don't think the sam guthrie because they were going to name her cannonball or they were going to completely change out the character no it was it was going to be cannonball but they they realized that'd be way too much cgi so took cannonball out of it and put in negasonic budget concerns were huge for this movie 58 million dollars is all they allotted for this movie because they thought it was going to fail that's that's the whole purpose and the only reason they made it was because you guys all saw the youtube video when he jumped in the van right when he jumped off the bridge and he jumped in the oh, van. yeah the test footage that was accidentally leaked yes yes that's the whole story right there so let's jump into some of the scenes we, we kind of touched on a couple of them but what scenes were were big to you guys Honestly, the opening scene, the opening scene where you get to see Deadpool uh, basically having a fight on a freeway inside cars, bodies flying everywhere. Uh, it's, and, and while he's constantly just making remarks and, you you know, doing the thing where it freezes the thing and he talks to the camera, it's all perfect Deadpool action scene that they then use to wrap in all the, you know, the the the, the, the past of of the character and his origin, everything else kind of ties in while you're watching this fight. But just little things like after the fights somewhat over and he's sitting there talking and uh, Colossus and he tells Colossus like, yeah, no one got hurt. And he like looks around at all the bodies and this guy falls down from the side. He's like, well, he was there when I got here. Like all of it's so good. Like that opening scene is incredible. I love that opening scene too. And it, we were talking about the budget constraints, but you know, the movie as a whole kind of goes 
current time goes to his past. It kind of goes back and forth, back and forth. So it's like a nonlinear story to it. Yeah. And that ties back into the budget problems that they had. They, because the fact that they could not afford that many action scenes, that's why they did that nonlinear style. That was a choice because of budget. That way they used one action scene, that whole highway traffic scene over the course of two thirds of that movie. Yep. That was the whole process right there. And so I think the action scene set the whole thing up. But it was, I think you guys got to get a little bit more subtle on this one. I think even the introduction when the music's playing, right? Yes. And, they're, and they're talking about who made these movies, that was the stuff right there. Like, I mean, that that was probably, if you're, I mean, there are a lot of great scenes in the movie. I think, um, you know, the end scene, the fight between Colossus and Gina Carano, that was a great scene. But I think the first, when you first go in there, that's to me, at least as a person going with my son and going, okay, we're good, we can watch this thing. And then looking at that, you're like, holy Jesus, they are taking it to the max. Oh yeah, that opening scene where the they say, directed by a guy paid way too much money. <laughs> Or it has like the, the 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 shot from Green Lantern in there. It has the uh, what was it like Time Magazine's you no know, sexiest man alive. It's Ryan Reynolds. Yes, yes, that's all of it right there. That tells you what movie you're watching. Let's change gears a little bit. Let's talk about the post credit scene because there is one in there. What you guys think of that one? Awesome scene. It's awesome. It it sets up Deadpool two. I think the um the cartoon on the way out the door kind of sets up the Deadpool the Deadpool two. I uh, I just thought again, it's, you know, it's a throwback. It's what Ryan he direct he he didn't. Tim Miller directed it, but, and that was fun fact. That was his first real big movie. I think you said that, uh, Chris. And before that, he had done special effects for the girl with the dragon tattoo. So, and then he did this whole movie that made $782 million and 58 million and is the highest grossing R rated movie of all time. So I love that scene. That was not the original idea for the end credit scene. They were actually going to go with one of two things before that. One was, remember the show Knight Rider from the 80s? Yeah. They were going to go with that end credit and just put the end credits for Knight Rider on the end of it. Have you ever heard of the, 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 the YouTube channel Honest Trailers? Yes. So they're going to have those guys come in and do an Honest Trailer for the cable movie. Ah, uh, Chris, you are always full of amazing facts. I should just tell you that now. Are you hitting on me? A little bit, a little bit, but it's non-sexual. I think we're okay with that. We're going to break the fourth wall and say it's complete plutonic male bonding. By the way, does anybody else wish they had the Voltron Eris ring? I mean, can we just be honest oh, with each other, guys? Awesome. I, I mean, that, I've been looking for that since I saw that movie. I take my son to these things when he's a kid. Could never find it at the counter. I mean, I feel like it's complete cheap marketing. Are you seriously thought I can't find that ring? Even went to Google, couldn't find the ring. You know the scene where he's meeting the pizza guy, the stalker, right? He's going to take him down. Yeah. yeah. The first Wade scenes. Yeah. So B. Arthur is on his uh, his T-shirt. B. Arthur from Golden Girls? Yeah. So supposedly Deadpool, the character, has a thing for her. And what's funny was he wanted to get a T-shirt with her face on it. And they, whoever controls the rights, the IP for, for B. Arthur, would not sell the rights. So he put on the T-shirt. He had to pay $10,000 to get that, sh- that T-shirt done. How, how does somebody own the rights for B. Arthur? If it's a Golden Girl, sure. Those are all characters. <laughs> How do you own the rights to a human being? <laughs> Not a Golden Girls thing. All the money went to charity, but it's still the fact that it cost them ten grand to get her face on a T-shirt. So ten grand because someone else owed the rights, and it took ten grand to grease the wheels of justice and get B. Arthur on there. I, I wish my face was worth ten grand. Yeah, I mean, I'd be in the hole at this point. I think I would end up owing somebody money. <laughs> This is a movie, one of few, and I think both gentlemen, Jeremy, Chris, I know you guys will agree with me. This is a movie that can come on a thousand times, a thousand times, and you'll find a reason to sit and watch the whole thing because it just flies by. Well, it flies by and it does feel like the Deadpool that I've read. Again, I didn't read it before this movie came out, but I've, I've been a very big fan since. And it's very much that same feel to it. In fact, if anything, this is a little more uh, subdued than the current versions of Deadpool where he's way more insane uh, for what's going on. But it's still like it has that same sense of humor. It has that same fourth wall breaking. Like it feels like Deadpool. That tone is it's extremely violent, but also fairly goofy. So I had not seen this movie for a while. Like it's been several years and I was actually worried going in to watch this again. Like, will this hold up? And I know we'll, we'll get to our reviews in a bit, but it could, this could have been made last year. 100%. This and Wolverine are the two most valuable properties that Marvel currently has. And putting them together is the only thing that's going to save this universe right now. I don't know about that. I think X-Men 97 is doing pretty good, but that's a whole different topic. But that's setting up. So you guys, if you're watching that, don't want to break a fourth wall. But if you're watching that, that is setting up everything over the next five years. I'm watching the small details. I don't know about you, but I like it like that. Oh, that's a song. 
This movie flew by. I watched uh, again this morning while I was working before I knew it two hours had gone by, which my boss probably didn't care about. But I did. I thought that was great uh, while I you know, had a two hour lunch break to watch Deadpool. It does. It flies by. The fact that they have that action scene at the start and they keep going back to it while they explain, you know, what the slower parts of his background would be, which are still not very slow. They all move very quickly and there's a lot of jokes. The jokes are nonstop. So there's not even the slow parts, even the parts where he's dealing with cancer. It's still joke, 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 but not in a tasteless way, if that makes any sense. Like, I don't know. It It's paced very well uh, for, for keeping my interest the whole time. Uh, I could have watched it again immediately after watching it. Boom. You brought up the cancer scene. We didn't talk about it during the scene part. I got to say, like, emotionally, that scene where he finds out he has cancer, that hit home. Like, that... They, for a comedy, an action comedy, to have that kind of deep pathos in it at that moment, that was heartbreaking. Well, he had to carry that, too, just so you know. I mean, that's probably the only scene in Deadpool. Now, there's lots of ways that they tell it in the Deadpool origin stories, because they do have like 10 of them now. But you you, you know, that Ryan pulled that one off really well. Like, to kind of pull, and it's while still keeping Deadpool's kind of snarkiness at a slightly muted level, but at the same time exemplifying why he has to go and why he hits the button on F it. May I say F it? Or should I say the F? bomb but f it uh, this is a rated r podcast so you can say whatever you want to say oh then fuck it he hits fuck it really well i did say dick and balls in another show so i think we're okay you did talk about dick and balls <laughs> so those are okay dick and balls are purely pg-13 we're fine yeah, you, you took us from uh, the PG rating, Fergal, and you went on a whole wa- on, the, on the wanted episode talking about rap balls. I think we lost uh, it at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, that was the first explicit episode we had. You know, this is a fourth wall breaking. I'm not sure if you gentlemen have seen the clear magic that we're creating right now, but this is fourth wall breaking. I feel like we are mercs with mouths, and I feel like we need to go and staple Ryan Reynolds' face on our faces. Deadpool is not a hero. He says it several times throughout the movie, but did it feel like he's actually a hero? He's like the fun Punisher. The Punisher. I really liked it. You know he's not a good guy. <laughs> but like, at the same time, you, you do like him and you want him to succeed. And in fact, in this movie specifically, the whole, you know, his whole purpose of going after Ajax, you, you can't not want to see Ajax, you know, go down. So it's like, he, he's great. I don't know how it would fit in. Like, I'm sure that they will use Deadpool. I know we kind of talked about it earlier. This movie, when it came out, was not part of what the current MCU is. But now it's kind of tying together these universes with the, the movie that's coming out. So, like, what the hell was I just saying? <laughs> I, just, I just want to stop there. I I actually wish I went first, Jeremy, because you said the Punisher. I couldn't have thought of that. cool. That was the coolest thing I've heard in, like, six weeks. I'm sure you can edit that into something that makes any sense, because I totally did, for like, blank out on what I was talking about. <laughs> I thought this movie did everything well. I thought this guy, I mean, this, the whole thing, he's not, he was never a hero, but, you know, I think it wasn't made with X-Men in mind, but you can't help, but I think the last 10 years, okay, so super simple, easy soliloquy, uh, last 10 years, Marvel created a team. It was a clear hero team. Morally conflicted, problems in general, but a clear hero team. The next 10 years, people are done with that. They want something different. And I think it's the different, Jeremy, you said it earlier, your brother was an X-Men, an edgier books, right? So you can't get more edgier than a guy like Deadpool. He's a hero, but I wouldn't call him a hero. Like, he's a hero that'll still put a bullet through your eye. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. So the the, I don't see how Deadpool would fit into the previous era in Marvel, right? He wouldn't necessarily fit in with the other Avengers. I could see him fitting in, though, with, yes, if you come up with the X-Men going forward or something like Ghost Rider or Punisher or even Daredevil, like these kind of superheroes that are more human in some ways and and less straightforward Superman slash Captain America style, clearly, you know, clearly the good guy. I think he fits in that. And even then, he's kind of on the fringe. I think him and, you know, I said Punisher earlier, I think they're both kind of very much on the fringe of what is acceptable to still kind of be a good guy where, uh, you know, but one is fun and one is uh, the complete lack of fun. Well, he's more of a lower stakes hero. It seems like, I, I, I mean, yes, I think in the comics he goes and fights, finds lady death and all this other stuff. But in the case of this movie, he fights Ajax who is not, you know, he's not threatening the world. He's not, no. his schemes are not going to you know wipe out some countries not going to drop an asteroid on anybody. He's, nope. He's just looking for power and selling weapons, right? Yeah. Um, and Deadpool is a street hero in this case. Of course, he 
destroys the street and blows up a decommissioned um, hell carrier. Oh, see that Marvel reference? We just threw that in there, a hell carrier. Yep. You got to remember, though, at the time this movie came out, it was a Fox production, which means it did not have access to any of the things that uh, Marvel had, that uh, MCU so they had. Could, they couldn't use them directly, so they had to tweak them to make them for Deadpool. Well, yeah, they couldn't. They had no access to the Spider-Man because that was owned by Sony. So all they had access to was the X-Men universe, which is why Deadpool had to go through Fox, because Deadpool technically is out of the X-Men universe when it comes to, to rights and for filming purposes. At the time it came out, it was in the it was supposed to be in the X-Men universe. That's the why they, the whole thing about Wolverine and being uh what was it, how do you describe that the uh the phrase he used for like schmulverine or something or pulverine oh it rhymes with schmulverine yeah i can't tell you his name but a pair of hairy balls yes a pair of hairs i can't tell you why he's called some hairy balls i can't tell you his name but it rhymes with schmulverine yeah when this movie came out it really felt like it was supposed to be part of the x-men universe or at least that was part of the joke but due to licensing costs they could only obviously afford only two x-men to be part of the movie itself but they showed up in the second movie they they got them all all quickly in the second movie, which showed the power of $58 million spent wisely. Yeah, the second movie definitely had a much larger budget than the first movie. I was reading somewhere that Cable was actually in the original script for the first movie, but due to licensing costs, that's why they couldn't bring him in for this one, which is also why they knew he was going to be in the second movie during that end credit scene. So this movie is CGI heavy, and the one thing about CGI productions is time, right? Time is not always nice to these things. Looking back on it now, it's been eight years. How does the CGI hold up? Amazing. You already said it, Chris. It was amazing. I mean, you could watch the movie any other time. And the first scene, as I said, the movie gets set off from the get, from the jump. But you, you, you guys talked about the fight scene. I think it's amazing. Extending it out. Amazing. Unique. Not done before. And just the CGI of that first go. I mean, that's just done very, very well. Yeah, I think it was good. I, I mean, of the movies we talked about, on this podcast, I think the effects in this might be some of the best. I don't know. Ghost World might beat it. <laughs> well, it's a, you and Wolf, that entire set was all CG. You'd never know. The CGI bust at the end of it all. It was actually Rick Shaw, just with a green screen behind it. Oh, I gotta see this movie. So what did you guys like about love about this movie, and what could they have done better? Give it more money, and there was nothing I didn't like about it. I, I love, I mean, I think we, we kind of stressed this earlier, but this movie would not work without Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. I mean, he's basically when i read deadpool now i know i don't he doesn't look like ryan reynolds but still like the cadence the way he talks all of it is very much i know that's what ryan reynolds was trying to do and he nailed it like it's 100 percent accurate so what works is everything in the movie because he's a totally believable deadpool the effects are good enough i mean like they're good they're they're not like over the top crazy they're good the, my only complaint is and this isn't as much of a complaint knowing that there are going to be sequels and it does make sense for this movie is, is that the overall villain is a little tame like the plot makes sense to be a deadpool specific plot but you know they, they could have had a larger scale villain or, or they could have had something that tied more directly to the x-men uh for for villains that would show up but you know that's a minor complaint otherwise uh, this movie you know we've talked about it beyond you could watch it a hundred times find some reason to watch it uh this may be one of the best superhero movies i've ever seen boom that that was such a well said answer. What do I love about this movie? Pretty much, you're right. It's it is a well put together superman superhero movie. There's very little to really complain about it. In scope, it's a small story. It, I do love the fact it's kind of like a combination of a love story mixed with a revenge story all at the same time. And it's not just go save the the damsel in distress. And it's not just the that's the big bad. Let me go eliminate them. I do like how every time I've watched it, I find new little tidbits in there there's supposed to be over a hundred different like little things hidden in the background like even um dog pool is in this movie if you look yes for he is yes he is and so is squirrel pool and you mentioned the bad guy right so keep in mind i think and again here's just me so i know that the latest movie that ryan submitted the most scripts he's ever done. He's done 42 different scripts for this movie, and they defi they figured out which one, the best one out of all of them. He's a perfectionist. I think he knew what he was doing when he built this movie, because I think you can't love Deadpool unless you love this guy. Then you step it up a notch, and then you turn it into what we've got now, and the bad guy in that movie is Cassandra Nova. And I don't know, you guys don't know who she is, or maybe you do. Uh, I'm going to leave that for our readers and our watchers and our viewers and everybody who is out there, but she's bad. Right. She's definitely on a super omega level mutant scale. It's interesting that you said that they're perfectionists when they wrote this thing. They actually wrote down all the fight scenes punch by punch. 
which is not normally done. Normally you say they go into a fight and then you have your, your choreographers come in and plan the fight out. But they actually laid out every single fight in the punches for that, especially for that first scene, Jeremy, the one we talked about. And they laid that all out. So you're right. They, they, they really were a perfectionist when it comes to this script, as well as any other Deadpool script. Ryan was crazy like that when he, he wanted this thing to, because he had, he first off, he was still reeling from Green Lantern. Like that one Razzie, even though I like Jeremy and probably like you love this movie and the other Deadpool Deadpool kind of dumb. The, it was better for Wolverine. Deadpool was sort of a uh, kind of a. I think he again he did that to show what you shouldn't do, and and so I think he clearly demonstrated that he might have did that on purpose. But this particular Deadpool, he he wrote the entire script. He pulled this entire thing together from top to bottom. This was his baby. So it took him a decade. So he'd written multiple scripts for this movie, and then he submitted the script and got it made. For the three people who have not seen this movie yet, should they go out and watch it? I would say yes. I would say two yeses and a yes, please. Um, yes, I would 100% watch this. As I mentioned, you know, a couple times, I really did like seeing this the first time. I like seeing it now. I've seen it times in between. I do want to stress, though, and I know we kind of mentioned this. This is maybe the least appropriate for kids movie that we've also talked about so far. <laughs> I don't normally care too much about violence in movies for my kids. I mean, they're not going to watch a realistic, you know, killing movie, but something like this is so over the top. It's fine. But it's it's the the sexual jokes and stuff are all good, but it's all stuff that if it got repeated, I'd have to explain myself. And I don't want to be... <laughs> They, you know, it's it's up a notch because it's in person, it's live, it's not written down in comic book form. So it has this extra level of skeeve, which is funny, and I do like it. But like I, uh, ha- most of these movies I've watched just in the living room. My kids walk in and out. They're like, "Dad, we're watching this movie. I don't care." Uh, I watch this alone, and I would not watch this because I do not need to explain myself <laughs> later. <laughs> The fact that you put a long disclaimer in there is everything. That just, I took my eight year old son to this movie. So I had, this was two days of explanations. This was two days of explanations to my wife, repeated over and over again to ensure. I, and then I did it again when I took him to Deadpool 2. I would still be explaining to my wife today why why I'm not allowed to take the movie. That would still be brought up in the conversation. With what about me, this is the two things to that. First, Fergal, I think there was another movie you said that you let your kids watch you should not have watched. Are, should we call like child services on you at this point? No, no, no. I just, my son was such a Deadpool fan. So growing up, didn't really have a great dad figure. So I didn't really have a dad. It was my mom, amazing mom. So I always strive. I've got one kid. So I strive to be the cool dad as well as the stern dad, but the cool dad. So he wanted to see this movie. I didn't, you know, I knew the character. I knew it was a rated R movie, but I'm kind of like, okay, how bad could they make it, right? Because most of the movies out of Fox, come on, were not that serious, right? Like, so I'm thinking, okay, we're good. You know, you go in there, we're good. And then you're not good. You're like, what am I watching? There's that whole scene where they do the calendar of sex. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Things where they go into a strip club. There's all this stuff. Again, it's it's fine. Am I going to take my eight-year-old? No. Am I going to let my 10-year-old watch it right now? No, not really. But I like it. And I think like the first, like all the action stuff would be fine with them watching. There's just other stuff that I don't need to explain. And every time this comes up, I feel like I'm, I sound like the oldest man alive. But seriously, every other movie we've talked about, like totally fine with kids. Every other movie that this, that this is in the same chain with all the X-Men movies, totally <laughs> fine. I feel like a bad parent right now. My God, did I seriously scar my child? I think he did. I'm so sorry to all my audience members. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scar him, but he loves Deadpool. So I, I he has a Deadpool mask. I do got to say, since you brought the strip club up, I do like the Stan Lee cameo. Yes. He's, he's the DJ. And I know he liked that cameo. Let's be honest. He's an This old had to be one of the best Stan Lee cameos to date. Now, for me, if you have not seen this movie, I do not know what rock you're living under. I mean, seriously, this thing did so well. I can't imagine anyone who's listening to the show who has not seen this movie. And if you haven't, go see it. You won't be upset. You're going to enjoy yourself. I do have to add Jeremy's disclaimer. Don't bring your children to this movie. It's a basic combination of great violent action, but also some raunchy comedy. Unless you want to be a really cool dad, but make sure your kid is down for the clown. Don't let him. Don't let him tell on you. Remember, uh, uh, what is that word? Snitches get ditches. You just got to remember that. You got to preach that into the kid if you are going to do that. So, are you guys going to go rewatch this movie anytime soon? I have got to watch all of them before I see Deadpool three. Uh, I will because every time I see this movie, there's another line I don't quite pick up on how good it is. Uh, this time it was when uh, Colossus grabs him and he's like, "You have to go talk to to Professor X," and he's like, "Oh, uh, McAvoy or Stewart." I don't know what time on <laughs> something like that. It's always little, little lines that are like calling out how ridiculous superhero movies are just because of the nature of you're going to have to have like for Colossus, you got a guy that wouldn't do it anymore. So fine, you got to get a new Colossus or you change how he looks. 
else or you have a different super like someone else has bought the the character or you know the fact that there are three different spider-man all these things are all called out in this movie and it's cool i will probably go re-watch this movie in the next couple of days i do want to bring up this one quick fact since we did recently record lead a battle angel did you know that robert Rodriguez was supposed to direct this movie i don't I, and tim miller did it right i think you just don't have a movie i think robert Rodriguez has a vision and he every movie including spy kids all the way up to desperado is very much robert rodriguez you can't get away from that well he turned it down to do spy kids for all <laughs> the choice. time in the world <laughs> so my question for you is was that a good choice yes good choice he made a great spy kids oh i also met friends said this as well did you know taskmaster was supposed to be in this movie no i did not know but that would have actually been cool because it would have been a different taskmaster now jeremy it's funny you say that like the there's a every time you rewatch this movie there's always a line you pick up on and there's a there's a part during that that scene that fight on the on the bridge and he says like welcome to regina it rhymes with fun yeah you know and you're like okay it's funny it's quirky and you know, i'm getting ready for this thing and I'm, I'm watching a couple interviews and ryan reynolds when he was in his 20s there's actually a town called regina in canada and he went there and spray painted on a, a billboard up there when he's in his early 20s welcome to regina it rhymes with fun and got arrested for it hilarious see that's that's all wonderful that's that's what made this movie that's i mean this is so you mentioned it, um, Jeremy, when you said you can't even read the comic anymore. And I mean, completely different medium. You can't read the comic and not see or hear the cadence in your mind of Ryan Reynolds, correct? Correct. So, you know, it's the same thing with Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. You can watch, you can read this book and you will still feel like you're watching Iron Man from the movies. There are very few, and Wolverine is another one, right? You can you can watch the movie, but even when you read the book, you still hear the bub. You just, it's very hard to separate. So to bring that all together, that is so absolutely dope. And I think that speaks to the people when you find that one person, like they're talking about Jason Momoa for, Lo, uh, for Loco, Lobo, Lobo, Lobo. Lobo. That would be almost the most perfect casting if he acts it well that would be the most perfect casting in the history of dc at this point we only talk about should they make a sequel or remake and I, the i think we're all on the same page for that and the sequel's coming out shortly after this recording so my question for really for you guys is this is should they canonically make this part of the mcu because at this point Mark, when the movie came out it was not part of the mcu it was a different studio but now that Mar- the disney owns every ip under the sun should this third movie actually canonically connect this to the mcu or should they try keeping it as separate as as they've done i think they are i think th- there's some scenes from the third or like the previews for it and i don't see from the movie where you see the the weapon x version of of deadpool from the wolverine origins and then they have deadpool show up as deadpool now and he like shoots him and stuff like they're tying all this stuff together i think it's going to involve timelines i think it's going to try to explain why mutants have suddenly shown up in the current mcu that will somehow tie to the fact that you know pieces of it have come from other previous other uh, Marvel universes that have the the X movies we've seen up to now. So I think this is going to kind of tie a lot of these things together. I couldn't agree more. I think so. I think Marvel woke up after Jonathan Majors, God bless him, Kang. After Kang got arrested, I think Marvel woke up and realized we're in we're in a shit trouble, right? Like they really went to the mat and there every movie they were making was doing worse than worse. Like, I mean, we got to the point where I watched the Marvels and I had to shut it the fuck off off when they started singing on a planet i was like are you are you kidding me is this what we've come to now musicals i don't like musicals is this what we're, we're musicals now so i mean the fact that they brought this character and they've brought it in a way that says you know what this multiversal war lets us tie it all together everything everything everyone loves they can do that now any which way they can bring every character back captain america's coming back as captain hydra so they can bring everything back and i think now you, it, it's interesting because you guys all mentioned different things like x-men has some of this in there I think um, a lot of the different stuff, even the new Thunderbolts should have a little bit of reference to this. Definitely the Fantastic Four will have reference to mutants. It's nonstop at this point. Now, for me, I like the fact that Deadpool stands on its own two feet. I like the fact that it has its own kind of humor and that it pokes fun at the superhero genre outside of itself. If it's pulled into the MCU, my worry would be is can it make fun of itself effectively like like She-Hulk did and She-Hulk failed at that. Jeremy, I think you're right. They're going to attempt to connect everything. They're going to bring it all in so it's under that MCU umbrella. They've already made a hint of that at the end of the movie Marvels. Uh, Fergal, I know you didn't wait to the end of that movie, but they actually try connecting the X-Men universe to that movie, sort of. So the question is, how are they going to connect them together? Is it going to be connected well or seamlessly? And will it make any sort of sense? And will Deadpool lose its special sauce? 
Yes, but I think they're on track. I mean, I think if they that I think you've got to go back and look at what they're doing now. Um, it's really reminiscent of the very early Marvel days when they tied a multimedia platform that had never been done before. I think well, you got to leave the Merc with a mouth as the Merc with a mouth. And you guys mentioned the Midnight Suns. I think somebody mentioned Blade and other folks like that. Daredevil. That's the Midnight Suns. Got to get those guys out there. But I think you know tying in the whole X-Men. I think that's the way, that's how you save Marvel. So rating wise, what'd you guys give this thing? I'd say, I'd say it rhymes with Regina. (laughs) It's awesome. One thumb all the way to the sky. One thumb up a Regina. One thumb up Regina's butt. Well, I'm, I don't know if I could, I should call (laughs) Come back next time. Whatever the other movie is. I I I was going to say, I rated a thumb that it's cut off and then regenerates, but I, I guess that's now a tame answer. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Uh, see, this is what Deadpool does to us. It, it, it actually allows us to channel our own Ryan Reynolds. So me, I give it a thumbs up. It's a fun movie. It, there's, I, I can't imagine watching this thing and not having a good time. Uh, it's not, there's no, it's not groundbreaking. There's not some amazing thing that happens from it. But at the end of the day, it's an enjoyable film. You can't go wrong with it. And I really don't know anybody who does not like this movie. I'm sure we'll find it when they write us a letter. But right now. <laughs> the, yeah. And so we're going to get a bunch of hate mail coming in saying, well, for number one, I never saw this movie. And because of you, I went to go see this movie and it is terrible. <laughs> the The cancer treatment is not accurate. Yeah, Regeneration usually, doesn't work that way. You should probably make sure to check the name because I'm almost sure that's from a Karen or a Ken. Yeah. <laughs> They'll tell us all the things that are not accurate with it, whether it did character doesn't actually work that way <laughs> very upset there's no jeff the shark oh my god jeff the shark will make an appearance i think where can people find you guys i could be out there everywhere now i'm everywhere and anywhere now i'm still kind of working rebuilding um we're rebuilding our, our pages and our different opportunities I'm still working on putting and kind of piecing together these shirts trying to figure out the best way to make that happen got a lot of ideas testing a lot of stuff and just going from there well aside from finding me every two weeks on this podcast you can also find me on retrovaniacs the only video game podcast called retrovaniacs that i'm on uh, also you can find anything that we do on retrovania.net what what i just want to say that you need a theme music and and you can always find me on Off Panel Creations. We're always doing something interesting over there. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoy the show, please give us a review, share it with your friends. And if you want to drop us a note, tell us how we are wrong about Deadpool, which would be very surprising. Or make a movie suggestion like Deadpool 2. Visit us at movie-smash.com. And thank you for listening. show please give us a review and share with your friends if you want to drop us a note tell us where we were wrong or give us a movie suggestion visit us at movie-smash.com